This is the brand new Fujifilm X Pro 3, a camera that's definitely hotly anticipated by many, and I've been shooting with it for the best part of about a week, taking all kinds of different photos out and about, landscape, portrait, different lighting conditions, checking out different film simulations, new film simulations. This camera does some new stuff. It feels really nice. And I think this is gonna be a great photographic camera. Now it does have some really nice video specs in there as well. I'd imagine this is probably gonna be more of a photographic camera, so that's definitely how I've approached it. I imagine if you wanted to go video, you'd probably be looking at something like the X-T3 or the X-H1 rather than this camera, but it does have some good video specs in there. We're gonna to get to everything, but let's dive straight in to some of the specs. So the X-Pro3 is housing the X-Trans4 and it's a 26 megapixel sensor. And that's giving you these really nice detailed images. Now straight out of camera, I thought these images looked great. I thought the X-Pro3 was able to handle the different kind of weather conditions and lighting conditions really well. And I just really like the look of the images coming out of this. So the colors, the detail, it's a nice, rich, sharp image. It seemed to be able to handle low light really well. So it's got an ISO range of 160 to 12,800. And then you've got a low ISO of 100 and a high ISO of 51,200. And playing around with the images in post, so in Lightroom and Photoshop, there was a lot of room with the dynamic range. So for how you wanna handle the shadows, I was able to pull a lot of detail out of those shadows. Now, often with cameras like this, we have to use JPEGs rather than raw photos because there's not a profile for raw photos in Lightroom and things like that. But even in the JPEGs, I was able to get a lot of detail from the shadows. In terms of portraits and things like that, it looked great, especially with the new film simulation mode. So you've got classic negative, which looks really stunning for portraits. It kind of desaturates and adds a bit of clarity and just looks really, really good. I was really impressed with that, especially on, on portraiture. You've also got a new black and white simulation as well, monochromatic color, which allows you to get a black and white image, but just add a little bit of color in there as well. So almost like a sepia kind of style. Now I was impressed by things like clarity control in camera, which allows you to affect clarity by five steps and also things like grain effect controls so you can affect the roughness and the size of the grain along with new color chrome effects so you can add some blue in there as well and of course classic film simulation modes like vivid a cross and a turner look really really nice straight out of camera and that's something i really noticed with this camera is if you're not into editing you can get a great end result just using these film simulation modes or you can use these film simulation modes as a great starting point for your edit. There's also a more advanced HDR mode in camera, which allows you to get better dynamic range in your photos. Now, I was using this just completely handheld while out shooting sunset, and this works ridiculously well. It means that in camera, you can get a great exposure over the sky and over the foreground, especially sometimes like sunset, where maybe it's difficult to get a nice exposure for both, where you're not gonna have something in complete shadow or have the highlights completely blown out. I was really impressed by how well the camera was able to handle this without me really having to do anything. Just stay relatively still while I was taking the photo. Now you've also got things like advanced multi-exposure, advanced focus bracketing, which works well to actually create an image for you where you've got great focus across the whole image. This is really good because you can effectively select multiple points to actually focus and the camera will just work through taking those photos. It's also very, very fast in terms of continuous shooting. So you can do 11 frames a second with the mechanical shutter and then up to 20 frames a second with the electronic shutter. That's very quick. That gives you a lot of options for capturing a specific moment. You can even do up to 30 frames a second in a cropped mode. Now let's talk a little bit about the autofocus. Now, while I was shooting with it, I did landscape, I did portrait, I did a variety of different things. I found that the autofocus worked really fast. It was really fast, it was snappy, very much a reliable autofocus system, not one that I really even had to think about. It can autofocus down to minus six EV, which is great for lower light shooting, and it's nothing that I ever had any kind of problem with. Now, like I said earlier in the video, this is probably more of a photographic camera than a video system. You've got the X-T3, which is a fantastic video system, and the X-H1, which is superb as well. 
but this is certainly no slouch. So you've got the versatility there of being able to shoot video if you want to. You've got 4K at up to 30 frames a second, DCI 4K at up to 30 frames a second. So you've certainly got the options there if that's something that appeals to you. So let's talk about the general kind of feel, the build, and just the design of this camera. Now it comes in three different colors. It comes in black, Dura silver, and Dura black. And the Dura versions of this, they've got a scratch resistant finish on them. So they look lovely. I think the Dura silver in particular, which is one I've got here, just looks so, so nice but it is scratch resistant and it's very, very hardy. It's also made with titanium on the top and bottom plates, which just generally make it very, very strong and tough. And that's generally a theme that I think is, is throughout this camera, you know, it's toughness. It definitely seems designed to be taken out and about, to really be used in all kinds of different conditions. It's not a precious camera, if you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's definitely a rugged, tough, piece of kit. Definitely feels like a film camera and I think it looks like one as well. It definitely feels like it's been designed with that in mind to feel and look like a film camera you might have used. I think that's really nice. I think it's a very good looking camera. I think it looks very different to other cameras on the market as well which is a good thing as well. Now that even extends to the back. We've got the hidden LCD screens. This flips down to reveal the screen but you have got this little screen here which shows you things like the film simulation mode you're using, white balance, ISO. It's kind of like looking at what film you have loaded into the camera, which I think is really cool. Um, I think this is probably gonna be a little bit polarizing, forgive the pun, because some people are gonna really like it, really like it, and some people are gonna be not so keen. You can, of course, just flip the screen down and it's right there for the LCD screen, which was never a problem for me at any point. You know, and shooting with that was actually quite nice because you know, whether you're shooting landscape or portrait, it's right there. I, I actually never found it to be an issue, the fact that it's it's not immediately visible, and it does also protect the screen. So it kind of goes into that toughness thing again, where the screen is constantly covered while the camera is not being used, which is kind of not a bad thing, to be honest. It is a touch LCD screen, and it is actually quite a nice LCD screen. You're able to use touch operation, touch shooting, touch to focus. I really think it's quite nice. I think it's, it's, a, it's a very decent screen. Similarly, the viewfinder is new as well. It's a hybrid viewfinder. So you've got the, the optical version of it and then you've got the electronic version of it, which I really, really liked. You've just got this little switch on the front of the camera, which you use to just switch between the two. Now that means that you can get a much wider field of view if you're waiting for something to move into frame or anything like that, but you've still got the overlay showing what part of it is gonna be taking the photo. You've still got your settings in there. And then with just the flick of this little lever, you can switch into the electronic viewfinder mode, which is really nice because it means you can then check your exposure, check your settings and things like that, check what it's gonna look like with the film simulation and all that kind of stuff. That's a really nice touch. That's a really, really nice touch. And it makes this a very versatile camera and a great photographic experience when you are shooting. It's, it's different to what's on the market, which is what I really like. It adds something, which is just great, you know, because a lot of cameras now, a lot of really high-end cameras, they're, they're all going to be sort of similar in that they're going to be very good. So it's nice to kind of add something in there. I really like that. Otherwise, design-wise, it's kind of classic Fujifilm. So you've got your dial for shutter speed. You've got your exposure compensation dial. They're both very, very nice. They're very well made. The whole thing just feels good in the hands. You've got this little grip here, which just adds enough to make it very comfortable in the hands. Ultimately, I think this is a great addition to the X-Pro lineup. I think it builds on the already impressive X-Pro 2, and the X-Pro 3 is just really, really nice. I personally like the hidden LCD. I like the kind of different stuff that's going on with this camera, with the viewfinder. I think a lot of people are probably already gonna know whether they like this camera. If you like Fujifilm cameras and you like this kind of style, this nails it, absolutely nails it. Um, and I'm really happy about that. I've got to say, it's probably one of the more fun cameras that I've shot with, which is an odd thing because it's obviously it's obviously a, quite a pro camera. It's obviously a very good camera, but I don't think I've enjoyed myself as much recently with a camera as much as I did with this camera. It just feels so nice to go out and shoot with. And I think part of that is the charm of the kind of look of it and the feel of it. You know, that it looks and feels a little bit like a film camera. I, I just liked that. I just liked that a lot. It made the whole experience really nice. It made me want to stay out later, take more photos, have a bit of fun with it, you know? And that, that's something that you can't get from just specs. That's a feel that you get from a camera. And this camera definitely had that. Now, if you have any questions about the Expo 3, pop them down in the comments and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. I'd love to hear your thoughts about things like 
the hidden LCD screen, about things like the hybrid viewfinder and all that kind of stuff, get it all down in the comments. Get it all down there. You know, let's get a conversation going. Make sure to subscribe if you're new as well. Make sure to give the video a like if you liked it as well, even if you didn't like it. Yeah, maybe give it a like anyway. I'll see you in the next video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. This is the brand new Fujifilm X Pro. Forgot what it was. This is the brand new <laughs> Dura Silver and Dura Black as well. Is that true? Let's just check on my notes. It comes in Dura Silver and Dura Black. Yes, and black. Good. Glad I stopped myself. <laughs>